So oh, hello everybody. So my aim is to uh, basically uh, try to uh, give some information on what is the phases, uh, what are the phases of a statistical system, but not you doing analysis, but doing algebra. So uh, I try to uh, uh, show that uh, phases can be seen as uh, like uh, some uh, invariance of a certain Poisset representations, which is uh, like something that is uh, new but not new at the same time. So for example, Kolmogorov extension, like proper, like problem is trying to find the limit of a certain uh, post-set representation. So here is the same thing, but for Markov kernels. So I'll start by talking a bit about what is the classical approach to uh, statistical mechanics, and uh, let's say infinite size statistical mechanics, and this doesn't work, okay? Uh, it does, because I'm a bit stupid, sorry. Okay, cool. So uh, when you have a, how, so how do you define a statistical system or an infinite size system? So for any, you give yourself a collection of uh, vertices, let's say, uh, I and then uh, for each vertex you have a random variable. Okay, so it takes uh, values into a finite set. Let's so just for exi the example EI. You look at you have a global configuration space, which is the couple of all the configurations of the variable each node, and you have a probability distribution on it, like the space of probability measures on, on omega. Then you're going to consider all finite sets, subsets of I. Okay, and uh, you're you're going to say okay for each uh, a I can define an observable uh, which is uh, or at least a space of variables which is the couples of uh, the variables that are over the elements in a and then you have the projections which are uh, uh, going from when you have more variables to less variables. Okay, an example is a, lati a lattice like a Z two like for example Ising model. So uh, what you're going to have is at each point of the lattice uh, a variable. Okay. And then you're going to give yourself the information of a conditioning on some border condition. It's complementary, has to be finite. So for each uh, element that is green here, here, every green dot, so every green node, has a fixed value of a variable on the node. And you're allowed to experiment only inside of this uh, small circle A, which is a finite size. So uh, the in this information is encoded by a probability kernel that goes from uh, EA bar to E. Uh, which is simply saying that if you fix the border condition, you still have stochasticity inside of the uh, EA. And uh, so uh, another way of saying it is that for each configuration that you have here, you will define a probability distribution on the whole sp configuration space, but you, you will have to have some restriction on it because you want it to behave as a conditional expectation. So the restriction that you're going to have is that you ask that uh, the kernel is proper, which is another way to say that if you have a function that is defined only on the border, and then you look at the image, uh, by, like the evaluation of it by the kernel, must stay the same. Okay, makes sense if you have conditions, you have fixed all the variables at the border of a, of a certain uh, like collection of variables. So if you fix all the variables that are here, and you take a function that is measurable only on the EA bar, then it doesn't change. So this is called a proper kernel, and so it's another way is simply saying that the, uh, when you apply the kernel to uh, uh, EA bar measurable function, it has to stay itself. Another way of saying it is saying that uh, a P is a se like the probability kernel is a section of the projection that goes from E to uh, EA bar, or you can see EA bar as uh, E, but with a sub sigma algebra defined by uh, the cylinders uh, that are uh, only defined by the EA, EA bars. Okay. So does it make sense here for everybody? It's okay? Okay. So the second one is the chain rule. So you want to, uh, you if you want your probability kernel indexed by uh, the set of uh, finite sets to behave like a, kind of a probability, like conditional expectation, you want, to to, you want it to respect the chain rule. So the chain rule is simply saying that uh, if you compose two kernels, then, uh, and if you, sorry, if you can condition on something that is smaller than something else, it's the same thing then condition if you condition sorry you start conditioning on a bar and then you a bar contains b bar then you condition on b bar then you you're simply conditioning on b bar okay so this is regrouped inside of a definition is very classical from the 90s okay so uh, if you uh, consider a collection of probability kernels that uh, indexed by finite sets that is proper and that also uh, satisfies the chain rule. You call this a specification and a measure uh, that is compatible with respect to this uh, collection of speci specifications, so probability kernel, which is such that the conditional expectation for this measure gives you the kernel, is called a specification, it's called a Gibbs, Gibbs measure for this specification. So it's the notion of phases, like extreme points are pure phases, and this is just uh, like conve le le convex hall of uh, the pure phases, so this is a phase. 
Okay, so now the, the, the aim is to try to uh, see it uh, more algebraically. So try to see uh, phases as the limits of something, like uh, for the Kolmogorov extension like a theorem. People know about it. So for Kolmogorov extension theorem, you have a, a, like a collection of uh, probability distribution that are constraints under marginalization, and you try to represent the collection of compatible measures as a measure on the whole space. So here is exactly what we're doing. We're doing the same thing, but for probability kernels. So what I want to try to avoid is the reference to a whole space E, because most of the time this is problematic when I want to have a limit inside of, uh, of probability spaces. By most of the time, you cannot see it as a probability uh, limits of, like let's say, above a diagram in, prob in the space of probability, like in the category of probability spaces in a way we'll define after, you cannot represent it. So you want to avoid E, and you want to avoid the computing some stuff uh, that is too heavy exponential, uh, too heavy to compute, like exponentially costly with respect to uh, to a, so e e power a. So uh, which is that <coughs> I don't want you have to consider every finite set. And another way to say it is I want to glue system together, system that are simpler for which I can resolve phases and then glue them together so that I can control the phase of the global si of the system that I glue together so that maybe I can get some information on more complex systems than the ones that I had at the beginning, but not too complicated as the Ising model so I can still say something about the phases. Okay, so what you need to remark is very basic is that uh, on the one side you have a specification. So a specification was here, collection of probability kernels in black, here the, mar the, um, the projections that defines the marginalization in dashed, and you had the measure, which is here, that is such that when you marginalize on EA and e, uh, ECEA, then it's the same thing. I mean, you, have, you put the measure on E such that it has to be compatible with each of the probability kernel. Which is you can reformulate it by saying that if you marginalize and you recompose by this arrow, then you need to find the original measure. So what you remark is that you can complete this code okay, by just uh, adding arrows, probability kernels, from only the local variables, so without any reference to E here. So this is something that uh, tells you that uh, uh, you, you're, you're close to getting a sort of functor, right? So uh, you need a m one additional information, which is you also need to keep the information of getting projections from EBs to EC. So you need to keep the, uh, the, the space of observables, which is that you need to know how to go from uh, finite sets to other finite sets if they are related by inclusion. So you can show that there is indeed uh, s like uh, the, um, let's say the morphisms, the blue, uh, the blue uh, probability kernels that extend the cone. And there's a unique way to do it. And furthermore, they, of course, satisfy uh, this uh, property, which tells you that uh, F defines a functor from a post set to, uh, let's say, uh, the category that has as morphisms uh, uh, like uh, probability kernels, uh, uh, let's say, uh, Markov category. So I will call it, like, I know it's not standard notations, but so it's the old thing that I kept from my PhD, and so I keep it in my heart, so I keep these notations. So I will call the category of uh, measures the uh, measurable spaces MES. So it has as objects measurable spaces and morphisms, which are measurable applications and kernels category, uh, the category kern, the category that has as uh, objects uh, measurable spaces and morphisms, the probability kernels. So I will consider most of the time finite sets, but uh, you don't need to. Okay, so the general definition I propose is that uh, you want <coughs> to uh, extend the notion of specification to having a couple of uh, one functor and one pre, uh, one pre sheet that goes from a post set, so let's say finite post set, and that satisfy the fact that they need to be sectioned to from one another, which is simply saying that you ask that the F, so the specification, the kernel like here, has is the section of a certain measurable map. So it's, it's very important to keep both because if you don't do this, nothing holds. So this is just saying here. So I extend on my on my diagram on the right. So for each blue arrow, you have a green arrow. It goes in the other way around, and such that the blue arrow is a section of the green one. Okay. So I this is just main 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 idea. Okay. All the rest is then simply saying that. Uh, you have, uh, so uh, you're going to consider the limit of this uh, functor and you can show that it's if it's in the limit of uh, the blue arrows, it's in the limit of the green ones, and then you want to use, uh, like, uh, use uh, the spaces of observables to be able to have some algebraic properties so that you can use homological algebra to get some information on the phases. 
Okay, so the Gibbs measures are exactly what I said, so distributions that are in the limit of f. So they are compatible with f, which is for any, uh, like, for any, uh, uh, so a point, you get arrows such that you can, if you compose the red and the blue arrow, you get the other red arrow. Okay. So, this is what I've been repeating at least twice already. So you want to compute uh, phases as a first homology group of a certain functor, cohomology group of a certain functor. In fact, you'll see it's, it's a functor composed with a, the space of observable L infinity functions, so it becomes a pre-sheaf. And you want to use resolutions to be able to compute it, and so you can be interested in a projective or inje injective objects uh, for certain uh, poset representations. So what are uh, projective pre-sheaves in general? There are pre-sheaves that can be decomposed into uh, collections of uh, uh, vector spaces such that uh, the pre-sheaf is uh, the projection from one vector space to the other is simply the projection from a direct sum to another. Okay, so for example, here, a very simple one, you have three vector spaces. So in R3, you have uh, two vectors three vectors, E0, E1, E2, two planes, and you look at the uh, uh, orthogonal projection with respect to the space, so E0, E1, E2, you can say that E0 is E0, so it's R, E0, uh, E2, the vector space generated by both is R plus R, and the up it's R plus R plus R, and going from one to the other, you just project. It's very basic. Now you change the scale of the product, it's not true anymore. Okay, what you can show is that in fact, what I sh show this that uh, uh, if somebody can tell me maybe this already exists I would be very happy but I didn't find any reference for this uh, at least for now uh, but it's that uh, if um, if uh, you can characterize in fact uh, projective pre sheaves by uh, adding some uh, like uh, constraints so it's an implicit it's an implicit characterization you don't need to find some s you just need to satisfy this property which is that the, uh, if uh, you have a notion of meet between B and C, then, uh, sorry, join between B and C, then you can, uh, no, meet between B and C, and then you can have, then you have that the composition between FB and FC has to be FB meet C. It's true for uh, this simple example. It's not true, for example, if you change the scale product where you can go from here to here, it won't give you the same thing if you go to here to here. Okay, so now, uh, ta -ta -ta. Uh, how do you go from specification to a uh, certain like uh, algebraic structure? You use the L infinity functor, which is that to each vector space, to each measurable space, you associate the space of observable, so bounded real value measurable functions. And then what you what you can start doing is try to compute the limits of a certain projective or injective objects. So what you can show is that uh, you can characterize the limits of uh, projective pre sheaves Projective, a spe uh, sorry, projective specifications. Projective specifications are specifications such that when you apply the inf L infinity functor on F, pre sheaf L infinity pre sheaf on F, sorry, this gives you a projective pre sheaf So you can characterize their limit. So the main idea is basically it's uh, the, pro the limit is the product of all uh, the uh, minimum elements, if and only if they exist. I mean, if, if they exist, if you have for each connected component only one minimum element, then it's a product on the, on the minimum element. This you would expect. But in other cases, it's empty. Okay, so uh, maybe I can stop here, in fact. If it's okay. No? How much time do I have left? You have uh, six minutes left. Okay, so uh, now I'll take questions. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, from this, uh, because you raised all these issues initially now about like complex computational complexity, uh, what are the contributions, for example, that these homological methods might have for that? Like, uh, like, is there like a like like? Do you have like something to say about like the, the computational complexity of so yeah, the yeah. yeah like uh, the computing things in this way? So so there are like three three answers. So the first one for the infinite size, we I can't say anything for now because you cannot use the same uh, cohomology groups because basically you have uh, you have a concentration and this you don't see it for finite sets, so it's not enough. 
for a finite sets, you can avoid the complexity issue because you can start looking at covering that's small enough. So it doesn't give you necessarily, you don't get the same limit and if you were considering all the subsets or subsets that are big enough, but you still have something with it that you can take a protective, uh, you can take the protective limit of the limit and you will still get some information. So you could expect that you could, uh, after some time, if you take a covering that is that, like more, if you have take more and more sets in the covering on your, on your space, then you will capture all the phases that you want. This I don't have any theoretical results for this for now. And uh, the third one, which is, uh, so now I forgot to put it in. So it, it's, it's still like, it, it, it's still interesting because you want, you can try to use compute minimal resolutions for computing A0. So this is like, a, if, you, if you were to compute the phases and you were to compute the limits, you would usually use the resolution that is given by the, the nerve uh, of the, the process. Try to find minimum minimal resolutions which are associated to uh, the complex that you took. So then you get some specific minimum resolution. So this is something I'm working on. It's not the priority thing, but it's, it's something I think is worth looking into. Okay. Um, yes. So um, one of the things uh, I fully agree with avoiding the references to the space E. However, I think it's still possible, right? Can't you just take the limit in the slice category under E? And under EA? Yeah. But not on, so if you view the limit, so what do you mean? Like you mean you take A, you look at everything that's under, and you take the limit on EA? On the category of arrows from E, basically. But you don't have E in the category of, you mean like if, if you look just at the diagram inside of the category of Markov kernels, let's say, mm -hmm. you don't have E. You cannot okay. define E because it, the limit of the, for the measurable, the limit in mess is not the same than the limit in, in uh, Markov kernels because it's the limit do not commute with the, with the, with T, with the monad. Okay, okay, makes sense. So you can't. This is like Jerry article that tries to characterize it. So you have a, a CD, a level you have me. This is like more for the point. Okay, thank you. Hi, um, thank you. I'm uh, curious. Uh, I saw that you uh, considered um, so abstractly um, functors from uh, some category to um, vect, so the category of vector spaces. Uh, are you aware of that there is a notion um, by Gabriel and Reuter that they use these functors uh, as modules? They def they say these are modules for for us now, and if you look at functors from a op to vect. These correspond to write A modules. So this, is this like the same thing that looking at the uh, incidence algebra for a process when you have uh, when you can just look at constant value uh, process? Uh, uh, constant value functors and you look at the incidence algebra and so you can look at that just as a module. Exactly, yeah. You just bundle everything th th together as direct, direct sum, you end up with. Okay, okay. Uh, and because. Uh, uh, you were uh, uh, you speaking about the projective re resolution. They do also stuff like that in their book in full uh, um, generality, and it looks quite similar um, um, with. But for they, they, they do it for any. Like, uh, so for any. For, uh, for any resolution, for any functor from no. any term. So yeah, 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 yeah. They define for any functor, uh, but and um, they also have, I think, these maps. You asking, are there? Uh, are you? The inverse maps? Exactly. No, not the inverse. Th this, like this, do they have this? Uh, this one. Yes, but I mean, do they, they have, so it said on slides and I can't find my slides. Okay, do they have this? The sections, uh, so not not these ones, but uh, in the next slide, uh, okay. I, I understand that, that you are asking whether some reference is there for direct sum of the S. Uh, of um, so uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, I think there there is something uh, yeah, in the full generality. Do they have this? Not directly in that form, I assume, yeah. but they have such direct sum uh, 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 stuff. So this, uh, is this is our projective objects. There are injective and projective, and the injective are the exclusions, and projective are the projections. And the characterization of the projective object is exactly this. It is known for process representation. Ah, okay, okay. I just g g uh, got the question so I get uh, from me that um, you are looking for some reference. Or that's my mis mis misunderstanding. Sorry. Yeah, 
so it looks really quite similar to all the quiver representation stuff because in the quiver representation you have the graph at the, as the bottom uh, which can be the graph for the Markov um, transition stuff yeah, yeah. and they just extend it to a higher level. 